Yo, welcome to the channel, guys. We are back with some Aether Gazer. Finally, right? You know I had a combat for 2.0. Can we call it 2.0? I don't know. It's kind of interesting to say the least, but here we are. Since 2.0 is literally days away, I'm going to give y'all a brief overview of all the characters from the brand new faction coming up in Aether Gazer. Who to pull for, who to avoid, what roles they play in the team. I do have all these characters. I've been playing them for a while. So this will be another long video. So grab your snacks and whatever you gotta do. I don't know how long it'll be, but we'll find out. Let's get started with the first character we've already been introduced to. Our first character up is Jin Woo. Okay, Jin Wu. So this character has been hyped up for quite some time. And for good reason, Jin Wu is a fire element DPS and classified as melee. Classified as the key word here because this character also has range, but she is classified as melee. Just keep that in mind. This character's whole kit is crazy, okay? I'll have to do a separate video to really go deep with this character, but <laughs> where should I start? She does have crowd control as well as a fire resistance shred all built into her kit. I think one of the best things about her is she's one of the most agile characters in the game because she can literally fly and once she's in the air, she has an infinite dodge. She can dodge as much as she wants, so she's very hard to hit. She's doing tons of damage while she's in the air. Easy damage because she's also ranged. And she's getting tons of self buffs on top of whoever else is buffing the team. Jen Wu is a perfect character, bro. Like, honestly, because her whole kit is just nuts. She has one of the highest crit damage buffs in the game on her yellow Aether Code. It's also one of the reasons that makes her easy to build because she's already getting such a high damage bonus built into her kit. It's not just that though. The thing with Jin Woo's kit is if she literally does anything, she gets a damage bonus from somewhere. Just read her kit. She has an ultimate, she gets a fire damage bonus. She casts skill 2, she just reduced your fire resistance, she locked the enemy down, so now they can't move. She consumed all of her divine grace, so guess what? Damage bonus. She casts skill 1, consumes 3 sun marks, damage bonus. She sneezes, damage bonus. All within her kit, so she's amazing as a solo character, but we haven't even talked about how broken the support characters are yet. Because if you have Ling Guang, she makes up for Jin Wu's weaknesses completely. So now we have broken characters with a broken faction bonus casually breaking the game. Long story short is, Jin Wu is amazing and she's one of the core characters for the new faction. She's also free so everyone should have her. Congratulations, you have the best character in the game. Let's move on to number two on the list, which is Ling Guang. All right, so Ling Guang is the first of a pattern we start to see in the character designs for Aether Gazer. What I mean is we started to see support characters being specifically designed for certain DPS characters. And I do mean that these support characters will always be the best support for this particular DPS. In this case, Ling Guang will always be the best support to pair with Jin Wu. Always. I don't want to paint her only as Jin Wu's support though, because she's also an amazing general support as well. Her ethicos allows her to give a variety of buffs that can support any DPS in the game while also healing, while also giving shields, while also charging ultimates, 
all that in her base kit. Her signature key is again one of the most busted keys in the game and what makes Ling Guang the best support for Jin Wu. Ling Guang's signature key gives the team a crit rate buff as well as an elemental damage bonus as well as increasing the proficiency of her core buffs she already gives. So yeah, this is Hera's competitor for general support so I feel they made sure her signature key was a very powerful key to give people a reason to pull for her. And yes, I do feel her signature key is worth it to pull for because it's perfect for all teams. Every team can use her, but she's breaking the game on her core team, which we will get into very soon, but let's move on to Ming Zong. And I'm sorry if I butcher any of these names, guys. I have no idea how to pronounce these names. So I apologize, I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm just gonna call him Sasuke though, so. So with Sasuke, if you thought every single character in the new faction was gonna be overpowered, well, you thought right, because Sasuke is also overpowered, but not quite in the same realm as Jin Wu. I do believe Sasuke needs some higher investment levels for him to really shine, but if you do invest in him, then you will see how powerful he truly is. I like to call him the Hella of the Ten Yuan faction, because at low level investment, I'm gonna be honest, he's pretty average. His faction helps him though, so if you have the right team for him, he will feel powerful, but he really does feel more team dependent than some of the other characters. I think him having split multipliers, because Sasuke has two elements, if you didn't know, his main combat mechanic is changing stances, which switches him from using wind to using lightning and vice versa, which also converts some of his damage. So he has split scaling on certain attacks. His key helps him out tremendously though. So if you have his key, he will be able to hit harder at lower investments because it has some pretty beefy damage buffs that can scale pretty high the more you invest in it. His playstyle is also one of the more fun playstyles out of these characters in my personal opinion. He does have a very spammy kit and switching stances feels very fluid. If you know what you're doing, he also has a lot of iframes you can take advantage of. So he has a pretty high ceiling when it comes to player skill with this character. In summary, if you like the character, I would pull for him, but just know he might need his signature key to really shine, as well as a team that supports him. He's a very strong character with the right investments. Next character up, we have the third character that completes the core team for this faction, and that is Geng Shen. Geng Shen? It's at least one of those, right? Now, this modifier is more than just a modifier. She's apparently a primordial modifier, which is another way to say that this character is very ancient and very powerful. And powerful she definitely is. Geng Shen is of the water element. She is another general support, this time in the form of a debuffer as well as having the best crowd control in the game. The same way Jin Wu sneezes and gets a self buff, Geng Shen sneezes and sucks up everybody in the room and debuffs them in multiple ways. Pops. I think out of all of this faction's characters, she's the most balanced out of all of them in terms of how much damage she does and how much support she brings to the team because she does both excellently. I think a lot of people will be surprised at how much damage she actually does because in AoE situations of course she'll do a lot of damage just based on her kit with her crowd control but even in boss fights 
she tends to contribute a respectable amount of damage. So she's an amazing solo character. Her signature key makes her cracked though. This is where you will see how powerful she is as a damage support. She gives the whole team two different sources of separate damage increases. Her debuffs become more potent and she also gives buffs to modified mode for the whole team. So let's just pause right there. Let's do a quick recap of the core team, which is Jin Wu, Ling Wong, and Ging Shen. So Ling Wong has fire resistance shred, attack buffs, crit buffs, and elemental damage increase. She provides shields and healing. Ging Shen has the best crowd control in the game. She has one of the highest pure defense shreds in the game. She also has elemental resistance shred. She has two sources of damage increases for the team. And she buffs how fast you can trigger modified mode. All of this is being funneled into a character with the highest crit damage potential in the game. And also has multiple sources of debuffs as well as buffs. I don't even think we talked about Jin Wu's key, it's broken too. Jin Wu's key unlocks quote unquote secret tech to fast stack Jin Wu stacks. We didn't even talk about that. My point is, there's so many layers that this team synergizes on, it's outrageous. And it's one of the reasons the meta completely shifts with this new faction. It's honestly very fun. But let's move on because we are not done yet. We still have two more characters to go. Next character up is Lu Li Ang. So this character was our first official look into this new faction. If you remember, we seen Lu Li Ang a long time ago, but now she's officially playable. And I gotta admit, she looks quite stunning. Lily Yang is a win support type character. She provides the team with both buffs and debuffs, as well as help the team with charging their ultimates. That seems to be a common theme among this faction of characters. All of them has very good ult charging mechanics. So Luli Yang is mainly going to be on the team if she's supporting another win type character. Fortunately, we do have two win element DPS characters in the faction. So if you plan to use Sasuke or Ying, then Lu Yang is going to be a great pickup. She has a pretty fun fighting style, but one thing I don't like about her playstyle is that her attacks leave her wide open for way too long, and it locks you in an animation for a very long time so that's just a warning I will personally use her with Ling Wong for the shield if you want to use her and your third would be a wind DPS or you can go all wind characters it's pretty much up to you but in my opinion she's definitely not a must pull unit but she is the best character within her niche which is a win support unit so I would only pull if you want another support for Thor and Osiris teams or if you want to try this faction's win team out then she's a great support for both win DPS within this faction. Speaking of let's move on to our last character which is indeed a win DPS. Our last character is Ying Zhao. She is a win DPS unit with one of the best designs in this game for two obvious reasons and those are her very big beautiful eyes. Seriously though guys, this is another one of my favorite character designs. We gotta give credit where it's due. So Ying Zhao also has a pretty interesting playstyle. 
but personally I feel you have to dodge too much for my taste. It is a very spammy playstyle, but that leads us to my next point. Part of the mechanics that makes her fun is locked behind her key. So I would say she's heavily key reliant because your playstyle will literally open up. You'll be able to utilize her self buffs more efficiently. She has multiple playstyles as well. So she can choose between a skill one nuke setup build or she can choose a more balanced build. Her ethicos allows her to have multiple playstyles, so I do like that about her. Unfortunately though, I'm gonna have to put her in the high investment needed list because I do feel she needs her signature key to do reliable damage as well as Lu Liang to support her and then you'll see some decent numbers from her. But again, I could be wrong because I don't have Luliang's key. So maybe I'll try to get her team up and running and then I can see her true potential. But at low investment levels, I must say that I'm not too impressed. All right guys, that is the end of the video. If you made it this far, be sure to leave a like. I hope this helps with who you want to go for, or who you want to skip. I know they literally skipped a whole patch on y'all, so I'm sure there's some people in panic mode right now. We did just get another very powerful Tian Yuan character with Lu Wu, but I'll cover her in a separate video because she's definitely another outrageous character with crazy mechanics. But yeah, I am back making Aether Gazer content. I got a nice little break in feeling very refreshed got some dope video ideas for you guys so be sure to subscribe like the video up hope y'all had a wonderful day it is your pixelated homie we out